Hey yeah, and welcome to Never Enter the Aragon. This is episode 1 of my free to play series. So in this video I'll be concentrating on character creation and which class to essentially choose. I will basically go briefly over each class, kind of the core mechanics of each and what sets them apart from each other. And hopefully this can help you choose the ideal character for you, especially when you're starting out new in the game. And later on in the video, I shall finally create my character, the character I shall be progressing entirely free to play and disconnected from all my other characters. So let's jump straight into it. So we go ahead and click new character. We are immediately greeted by our race selection. You essentially choose which one you prefer here. You can read through them yourselves. Different ones give you different bonuses. I'm going to go ahead and choose the race that I'm going to play on my free to play character. So I've decided I'm just going to roll with a human. Hit continue. And here we have all the different classes. Now let's go over each of the classes and kind of the key features that each of them have. So a rogue. The rogue has two different paragon paths. One will allow you to essentially be up close and personal to the enemy and you deal your damage all right up and in the thick of things, just slashing with your daggers. And then your other paragon path is your whisper knife, where essentially you will be able to throw your knives at your enemies from a distance and thus gain damage from afar. The rogue is purely a DPS class. You will have a key feature which will allow you to go invisible. This can be very helpful for on a defensive front as most mobs will then either stop attacking you or switch to another target as soon as you go invisible. Also it's a pretty decent role playing one and it helps you sneak past enemies where you may not be able to do so on any other class. Now on to the cleric. The cleric has two different paragons. One will allow you to heal your allies and the other will damage your enemies. Currently in the game as it stands right now, the healing on the cleric is so-so. It is one of the best at heal over time with its power of healing word where you can heal your allies over time for a long duration there of 18 seconds. As for its other paragon, it is currently the highest damage dealing class in the game. However, the skill cap is quite high. It will take you a lot of practice to get there. And that being it, you will need an endgame character to exactly see how much damage you can do above all the other classes. Then we have the wizard. This is another true and true DPS class. You'll have two paragons, both of which will concentrate on kind of different types of magic, but they will all end up just dealing damage. I'm not entirely sure on a wizard and what skills and the differential between the two paragons as I really haven't played a wizard much at all. But yes, in essence, you will be able to cast spells upon your enemies, whether it's from afar or up close, that is up to you. You will have the ability to teleport out of a nasty situation, disappearing from one spot and appearing in another. If you want to put it on a tier list of DPS compared to the others, the wizard currently suffers in an AoE environment with its DPS. As for single target, it is rather mediocre right now and there's a lot of people complaining because the wizard used to be the best and now it's uh, not the best. So the ranger. The ranger is another true DPS class. Two paragons, both are DPS. However, this class allows you to use the bow. Along with this, uh, you cannot see right now, you can also use a set of knives or axes or whatnot, but you'll be dual wielding them. You essentially have a stance shift where you'll be able to switch between your range stance or your melee stance. And in doing so, you will gain a whole different set of powers upon switching. This can be really cool as a DPS for a ranger. There are multiple different builds, ones which concentrate on just shooting at range, ones which just concentrate just on uh, dealing DPS at melee, and others which you regularly switch between ranged and melee to deal maximum damage. Now let's go to the Warlock. 
The Warlock has two power guns, one which can do healing and the other one which does DPS. The Warlock can do actually a fair amount of DPS as it stands right now, definitely compatible with the high end DPS classes. Essentially the Warlock you'll be using the souls of your enemies to cast spells upon them. With the Healer Paragon you'll be using your Soul Weave to revive your enemies or essentially heal your enemies with a multitude of different powers. This in my opinion is the most diverse healing power gun. You'll be able to choose to heal over time, you'll be able to choose to burst heal, you'll be able to choose to give small shields or barriers to your allies. The best thing that I believe a warlock excels at is single target healing. The ability to heal your target from a low amount of HP to a maximum amount of HP. Now on to the Paladin, currently my most played and favorite class. In my opinion it's the most versatile as we have two Paragons that are both supports you could say. One that tanks and the other that heals. As the tanking Paragon you have abilities which you can essentially take the attention of various mobs and bosses and make them all hit you and with those abilities you can make sure you can survive. However you may, may need a healer to back you up. As for the healing Paragon your key focus is on shielding your targets. We are able to heal however we are currently yes the worst healer in the game if you just consider the healing. However the ability to give those shields and that added layer of protection is one of those most unique things in the game right now and we do it best. So generally we are the support healer in a trial based scenario where we would be the second healer which mainly just provides those shields to our allies. Now for our barbarian. Our barbarian has two power guns. One where you will be dealing maximum amount of damage up close and personal all melee with your great big sword and another where you can be a sentinel where you will be a tank drawing the attention of the enemies and making sure they all hit you and in doing so you can use your big blade to block the incoming strikes to a certain extent and you'll have a whole load of other different powers which you can increase your tankiness and self heal yourself. Overall the tanking paragon for the barbarian is currently in a not so good state. It is currently in my opinion the uh, worst tank out there right now as it is finding it very hard to compete with the aggro from the top tier DPSers. However of course in casual play it does just fine. As for its DPS compared to the others it is actually one of the top tier DPSers right now. It recently got a good few nice buffs to its magnitude and potency of its single target powers and thus it can excel a whole lot more in a trial based scenario like Tower of the Mad Mage or Zariel. Now for a fighter. A fighter is your standard stock tank along with a DPS power gun. As it stands in my opinion the fighter tank is one of the best tanks out there at just holding the aggro and the attention of bosses especially in single target. In AoE arguably I would say the paladin tank is actually a little better at holding the aggro but the fighter tank is a whole lot better at just holding that aggro in single target due to its much higher magnitude on its increased threat powers. It is also a lot more new player friendly to play as a tank as many of its mechanics can be a good bit more forgiving. However when you get into complex mechanics like in Zariel it can be pretty tricky since you only have one hard taunt limited behind cooldowns. Anyway onto its DPS Paragon it can do actually a fair amount of DPS. However, a key thing to success on a fighter's DPS is animation cancelling. Getting those powers off faster than they actually normally could. With animation cancelling, you can get those powers off much faster than their set 
cast times and thus dealing more damage. So with that aside, which class am I going to choose for my free to play series? Well, looking through the comment section, it is, yeah, predominantly a lot of you want me to play the fighter. I went through all the comments, put them and tallied them all up and yes, clearly a lot more of you want me to play the fighter than all the other classes. However, a lot of you actually want me to play the DPS power on the fighter. I shall definitely be doing so while I level up as I'll generally be in solo content and I may as well benefit from that extra damage. However, when I get near high end game, I think I'll be focusing more on the tanking, as it's generally a lot easier to get into groups and whatnot. As a support role, they are generally a lot more needed in the community right now, as a lot of people tend to just play DPS. However, that being said, I do fully intend to flesh out my DPS power gun on my fighter and show you guys that the fighter is not a dead DPS, it can do actually a fair decent amount. However, a DPS power gun is a lot more expensive and will take me quite some time to actually get to fully end game where I can compete with other top tier DPSers. Anyway, let's choose our ability scores here now. I am going to choose plus three constitution, I believe, giving me the extra HP. However, I could definitely benefit from using strength as strengths will give me that bonus to stamina regen and physical damage boost. However, I may switch back to strength later on when I'm concentrating more on my DPS Paragon. I think for now, I'm just going to go with constitution with maximum hit points and action point gain. So, let's continue. Now for the visuals of my character, I'm just going to run through it and um, essentially skip to the end and show you the end result. I have finished making my character and here he is. So let's continue and here you choose a deity. It does not matter whatsoever what deity you choose. Essentially just choose whichever one comes to your role playing fancy. I'm just gonna choose Torm and let's continue with that. And here we need to make our character name. Let's just name him Aragon as I do not have currently a character named that. Here you can fill out your biography and whatnot. And there we go. Feel free to uh, inspect me if you ever see me in game and you can go ahead and read that for yourselves. And let's begin the adventure. So this is where we're going to conclude this video for today. Hopefully this was somewhat insightful for those of you who are initially creating your characters. And hopefully you uh, liked what you saw here in the creation of my character. Hopefully you are pleased enough in me creating a fighter as my character for this series entirely free to play from level 1 to 80 to end game and we shall see where we go from here and as always if you like what you saw here consider leaving the video a like if you're new around here consider subscribing and we'll see you guys in the next one goodbye for now